t about 25 years ago or so, uh, Prop 2 and a half got passed by the uh, taxpayers of Massachusetts. And um, that, of course, allowed uh, budgets, to, in school budgets, town budgets, to raise by 2.5% per year. And for the first number of years, it, that seemed to work out fine. The next step was for people to uh, start asking for overrides. The override is an attempt by the schools to do the best they can that's reasonable for the students. Funny, this town thinks to solve a problem, you throw money at it. Well, I think everyone has mixed feelings about the override. I certainly am 100% for education, and I think public school education should be funded by the town, but I don't think we can go on like this year after year after year, and it certainly was evident this year in the voting. The override passed by 35 votes in Hamilton. From, from the very early times, education was considered, especially in this town, as a very, very important thing. There were five, at one time, five separate one-room schoolhouses. They had one in the north part of town, one in the west part, one in the east part, one in the central part. And eventually they then combined. Later on as time went by, Massachusetts enacted um, several acts that made it mandatory for um, children to have education. And over the years, it's, it's been that schools are uh, funded by uh, some tax money from the local people as well as money that was paid into the state. At one time, I can remember reading they, the state contributed $200 while the taxpayer in town paid something like $700. And that was considered a tremendous amount of money. The problem of the cost of education has always been recorded as being too pricey. Education costs for suburban communities are increasing at a tremendous rate and at a greater rate than our populations can afford to fund. It's, it's making it so that it's absolutely almost unaffordable for the average person or for senior citizens who are on a fixed income to live in this town. The override is crucial to the success of the Hamilton Wenham school system because the programs that it allows to operate are important to every student's experience at the high school. Anytime you are talking about limited resources or cuts that impact programming, services, you are going to have to make decisions that impact children and impact their daily life at school. The overrides at this point now focus on bare bones programming, um, providing quality but limited um, programming for students. If I uh, say the police department needed uh, an extra, another cruiser, and they didn't have enough money in their budget, they'd ask for an override for that, or uh, maybe the fire department might ask for an override for a buy a new fire engine. But those kind of overrides are just sort of temporary, because they just pay for that one request, and then it's done and over with back to the old budget. But with the schools, it's quite different. When they pass an override, it, it's, it's compounded, if you will. It's, it's there every year. Uh, I get upset when I hear people say, well, I don't have any children in school, and so why should I pay the taxes? And I'm saying, you know, we supported your children when your children were in school. Well, the enough is enough was developed because there was a need to have the opposition to the way the budgets are handled. So we formed that group so they could look into these things. People are being hurt. Enough is enough it was bound to happen. People were tax tired, and uh, that group finally uh, got some momentum and you know, made some uh, movement. Certainly the last 10 or 15 years there's been many overrides for education. But to be fair, what has happened is the government has mandated programs that have not been paid for. And that's made it very, very difficult for everybody. 
at the federal level, a lot of, you know, like No Child Left Behind, NCLB, is a, that's an unfunded mandate. Those are responsibilities that have been sent down from the Bush administration to the states to fund all, all this stuff, but no money is helped and no money is followed. This problem is uh, found in many communities like ours, uh, you know, residential communities without a large uh, commercial or industrial property tax base. It's a pretty basic problem for Hamilton. Um, they'll solve it if they ever get some industrial base or something like that, but I don't think it's going to happen in a rush because the way the town is set up, um, there is no industrial base and quite frankly I can't see very many people wanting to have an industrial base. Well, I think when we hear industry, we think it's a great big plant that's going to take over Patton Park or some such thing. Um, I prefer to think that we still have possibilities to be more creative. There are certain people in town that want to keep this lovely ambiance that we have and do not want to see the town cluttered with businesses, but uh, there comes a time when it's going to have to happen. In a perfect world, the federal government could do an awful lot more to uh, uh, spend the money where it really needs to be spent for humanity, to help save the world. And it's going to happen eventually because we're coming to a brink where we're either going to spend the money and fix the economy, fix the ecology, right, fix the world that we've broken, or else we're just, I don't think we'll, we'll make it. I think people have all got to work together. We've got to bring groups together, and there has to be some positive communication between the groups. You can't have two different camps. You have to come together, meet, discuss, and really come up with some creative ideas. You people are our future. We're able now to turn things around. We might not be able in a few years.